Let us start our worship service this morning with just a, a short uh, moment of silence that we would prepare our hearts and minds for worship this day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for gathering us here uh, in your temple, and we pray that the time we spend here would would uh, bring honor and glory to you, that the, the words that we hear, that we would learn, that we would uh, go forward this day through the week, that we truly would be disciples of Jesus. In his name, amen. If we would all rise, we will start our service this morning by singing hymn 459, All for Jesus. not here this morning she doesn't feel well she has a cold and and she's been trying to give it to me and uh, so I've been taking allergy pills and vitamin C so she told me don't you dare stand up there and sniff during the whole service so so if some if you notice that I'm doing a lot of sniffing somebody pitch a hymnal at me or something so we'll <laughs> we'll be okay <laughs> um, well we need to welcome everyone this morning, uh, especially any guests and visitors, and uh, uh, especially Rick Lawler and his wife this morning. He's here uh, to share a message with us this morning, and, and it's always a pleasure to have Rick here, and it's, it's a blessing. Thank you for being here. Um, announcements. Uh, if you look in your bulletin, uh, there are ju just a few there. 
Um, just a reminder that August is uh, Child Evangelism Fellowship uh, Mission Month, uh, and the information that you might need is there in your bulletin. Uh, we're still looking for a couple of positions to be filled in the church, and you can read about those as well. Um, I'm told that we will have a coffee hour after the service this morning, and we will uh, be serving communion this morning uh, in pastor's absence as well. So um, are there any other announcements that anyone would like to bring forward? Good morning, everyone. Uh, just an update on the CIA youth group. Yesterday, um, we went to Heaven's Hope Worship Cafe, and we served for two hours. It went by really fast. I wish we would have been able to do more, but it was really fun. We served for two hours, and then we went afterwards. We went and had some fun at the amusement park, and then yeah, we had a party at our house with the CEF to, with CEF too, some CIA kids, but. So uh, when we arrived at the Danielson's house, we also packed uh, backpacks, kind of uh, supply bags uh, filled with food that could be easily made at home uh, for uh, the hungry across North Dakota and locally here. Uh, stuff like uh, ramen and uh, little uh, crackers, uh, just some easy things that could be uh, made up in anyone's home. Uh, and I believe we were thinking of donating those to Carrie's, Carrie's kids. Uh, we don't we're sure when we're going to deliver them, but... Uh, then we prayed over the backpacks individually for those who would receive it. And, that was, and then we were able to celebrate with some pizza. So, Those kids are great, aren't they? Yeah, thank God we have them here. I have to share this with you because um, I don't know how many of you get the guideposts that you read every day. That's kind of my, my Bible study. Anyway, I just have to, I have to share this with you, if I may. Yeah? Go ahead. <laughs> Following your heart's desire. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. That's in Proverbs. Here's a story. On her 11th birthday, Hannah Simpson asked for a pony, but her parents refused because it was too expensive. So her brother jokingly told her if she wanted to ride so much, she should ride the family's six-month-old calf. I thought it would go with your, your history. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so Hannah did, and Lilac changed her life. Calf and girl grew up together with Hannah riding lilac everywhere and lilac enjoying it just as much. They take gentle strolls together, and, and lilac, like a horse, even jumps. <laughs> Can you see that? Lilac was always jumping out of the cow shed when she was young, so she thinks she likes it too, says Hannah. Recently, however, Hannah received a horse. Others assumed she might want to ride properly, Though she graciously accepted the horse and has ridden it, she still prefers riding lilac. Isn't that sometimes a way with what we pursue? After all, a girl shouldn't ride a cow, right? <laughs> and a cow shouldn't jump like a horse, right? <laughs> but Hannah prefers the riding companionship of lilac, whom she calls her best friend. While riding a cow may be unusual, Hannah has experienced a wonderful bond with her bovine. Hearing how lilac has influenced Hannah to stand on unconventional ground makes me grateful that being different and wanting to do things differently is okay. See? If a cow wants to jump, then she should jump. When we follow our heart's desire, as Hannah and lilac have done, and we keep in time with God's desires for us, we too will find our greatest pleasure. And then there's always another little Bible verse. This one's Roman, in Romans 12. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what's God, 
what God's will is. Be good, pleasing, and perfect will. I thought that was just too cute to pass up. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Foxy. And just a just a, a reimbursement of what Foxy uh, mentioned. Um, uh, I think you would all agree with me that um, our church is truly blessed with the young people that we have in our church. Um, I can vaguely remember being that old, um, having my mom and my mom and dad drag me to church on Sunday mornings, and and uh, to see the leaders that we have and, and the young people that that they teach uh, is truly amazing because uh, they are filled with the Holy Spirit and, and I just praise God for that. Okay, if there's no other announcements, um, I do have a, just a short story. Um, there was a, a dad sitting in his living room one evening he was reading the newspaper, and, and uh, pretty soon his uh, oldest son came into the living room and uh, asked his dad if he could borrow the, the car for a date that he had made with his girlfriend. And um, the dad put his paper down, and he thought for a while, and, and the dad was always kind of annoyed with the length of his son's hair. And... Um, he finally told his son, he said, well, he said, I'll tell you what, I'll make you a deal. He said, you can borrow my car and, you, and go on your date, he said, if you promise me that you're going to get your hair cut. Well, it was kind of a struggle for the young man, but he finally decided, well, okay, that's acceptable. So the dad handed him his keys, and the young man was going to walk out of the living room, and he turned around, and, and he told his father, he said, you know, Dad, he said, Jesus had long hair. And his dad looked at him and he said, yes, I know, he said, and Jesus walked everywhere he went. <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, young people. <laughs> okay, let us continue with our praise song this morning, Ah, Lord God, and we'll sing that through twice. was a tough one. You better sit down. <laughs> uh, for our special music this morning, um, it's not in your bulletin, but um, Annette said that she was hogtied yesterday and, and persuaded to, uh, to bring us some special music this morning.
Thank you, Annette. Okay, we will continue with our ministry of prayer. Are there any prayer requests this morning that are not in our bulletin? His name again? What was his name again? And her name was Carrie. Carrie. Her sister Tammy is at home with it and is on the nebulizer and refuses to go to the doctor because they will put her in the marble. And she's a nurse. And their other sister, Shirley, is also positive. So three, the three sisters got to. <laughs> to that, yeah, it's, it's a bad, it's a sad bad. She does respond, and they, her sister called and said, please tell her when she flutters her eyes a little bit that we are all tonight back here praying for her and loving her. So she's still, you know, they've got her in this place. Okay. Okay, anyone else? Um, I would just also lift up our daughter Haley. Um, she's expecting on September 8th a little boy. And um, uh, <laughs> she, uh, a, month ago, a month ago or so, um, she thought she was having a heart attack and, and she ended up in the emergency room. And, and um, they found out that she has uh, gallstones. And about a week later, she ended up in the hospital again. And so um, she's struggling. Uh, I think she's ready for that baby to be born. And, and, um, uh, and I know uh, the, uh, last weekend we were at a, the wedding here in town, and, and, and some of the ladies there, I was hearing that there's a, there's a, <laughs> a bunch of uh, expectant young mothers in New Salem. Uh, there's there's going to be a pile of babies born here in the next few months. So. Let's just uh, remember to lift up all of those young, young women this morning as well. Okay, if there's nothing else, let's, let's bow our heads this morning before God. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning, and um, Father, uh, the emotions that that we see here again this morning run from, from one end to the other. Uh, there's joy and sadness, there is strength and there is weakness. And Father, through it all, um, we ask that you would strengthen our faith, that, that uh, we recognize the fact that you are always with us, that you promise that you will guide us and, and lift us through it, all situations here on this earth and, and we thank you for that and we give you the praise and the glory for that fact. Father, um, we pray uh, for Carrie this morning and, and for all those people and families that are affected with this COVID. Uh, we pray that uh, there soon would be um, a light at the end of the tunnel, that this, this uh, disease would would slowly come to an end and, and, it, 
and that's a slow process, Father, and we pray that you would give us strength and that you would guide us and that you would be with those that are affected with that illness and, the, and that you would bring them healing. We pray for uh, Gunner's friend, Nehemiah, Father, we praise you that, that he has been returned and, and uh, probably not under the most ideal circumstances, but Father, um, we know that you are almighty and your Holy Spirit can do miracles, Father, and we pray that, that there would be miracles in, in Nehemiah's life. Uh, we lift up um, all those young ladies that, that are expecting um, little ones in the next few months, Father. We know that um, it's not an easy thing. Uh, childbirth um, is a difficult thing, and, and we pray that, um, that you would be with those mothers, Father. The Bible clearly tells us that, that you knit little ones in their mother's womb, and, and Father, well, we... we recognize the fact that those little ones are are made uh, perfect and holy in your sight and and we pray that uh, you would um, keep mother and little one safe in all those situations we pray for our country father um, there's difficulties uh, with with politics with diseases with with you name it um, father um, we call ourselves a Christian nation, Father, and let us never forget that. So many times we've, we've turned our back on you, and we ask for your forgiveness, Father, and we recognize the fact that, that our country is strong because of you, and that's the only reason, Father, you have blessed us, and we thank you for that, and we pray that you would continue to keep our, our, our nation strong and that we would never, ever uh, forget the fact that we are a Christian nation. We thank you for the rain that you have brought us. Um, it is a blessing, Father, and we pray that that rain would continue. There's many places in this, in this state and in this nation that are dry, and we pray that the, the rain would continue. And we thank you for, for the bounty that we see around us here in, in New Salem. Harvesting has, has begun, and, and um, we pray that uh, you would be with the farmers and the ranchers as they as they harvest, uh, keep them safe, and put your loving arms around them, Father, and that, that you would reward the hard work that they do. Heavenly Father, we bring up uh, all those people that are hurting this morning. Um, whether it be surgeries or illnesses or, or deaths. We have a number of families that have lost loved ones, Father, and we pray that you would give them strength and that you would heal, heal broken hearts. We lift up all these petitions to you this morning, Father, and we continue our worship of prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm trying to keep everything in order, so just bear with me, okay? <laughs> okay, um, if our ushers are prepared this morning, we will have um, our offering. Let us bow our heads before the offering. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Father. We are truly a rich nation, and, and we thank you for that. And we pray that uh, the gifts that we give this morning would, would bring glory and honor to your name. And we pray that those, those gifts would be used to, to spread the, the wonderful name of Jesus 
throughout our community and throughout our world. In his name we pray, amen. If everyone would rise for our offer, offertory response. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Thank you. You may be seated. As we said before, uh, Rick Lawler is with us again this morning, and and um, as I said, Rick is a blessing to Peace Church, and, and he's always has a wonderful message for us, and I'm sure today will be the same. So, Rick, welcome. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's good to be here this morning. You know, you never know when you're going to get out these days. Uh, I'm a farmer, so it don't make no difference to me. I'm just busy anyway, so it's not big, not a big deal. But I, I haven't. I see Gary's out there this morning. Hi, Gary. How you doing, Gary? Okay. <laughs> Gary grew up in our hometown, so he's kind of a ex wafted cityite, I suppose you would say. He still but anyway, no, it's it was so it uh it's kind of fun to get around and, and to see things we go probably more than we should. I'm kinda of hard to tie down, so I just kinda of go. And uh, we've had a it's been a good year for us. It's been a little dry down in our country. Uh, the points, but uh, every time I come down here, it looks so good. Maybe I should trade farms. I don't know what the deal is. I I see your soybeans, and I sit there and I drool out of both sides of my mouth. So I traveled from here to Dickinson with my hanky, you wiping off my face, and and so anyway. But anyway, it's good to be here this morning. Lord bless you all. And before I start, I always talk better after I pray. So we better pray. Our Father, I thank you once again that we could gather here and share together the goodness, your goodness. God, you are so good to us. We are so blessed to get, have the opportunity to get to know you as our personal Savior. And I just pray now, as we share together this morning, God, as we've heard such good stuff, Lord, already, we just share that we can pray that we can share and add to it in Jesus' name. Amen. And young lady about the calf story, you know, I got two grandsons that live with us and we had a calf that was born last year to, and I don't know what happened to Melissa, Melissa. 
And Melissa's head was cocked. She couldn't see. And she was, and so it happened to me that about the same time she had this calf, there was a, an orphan. And so we took her. I didn't think she'd make it. I really didn't. I got to be honest with you. But them boys prayed over that calf, took care of that calf. And Melissa now is a grown up. They wonder when she's going to have a baby. Oh, I said, Grandpa's doing his very best to see that that doesn't happen for another, at least another year, because she is a sm stunted calf and everything like that. But when you saw that story, they, I got pictures of my son setting on her, and oh, that's crazy. But anyway, they have a lot of fun. But they do have horses they ride too, but it's good. Well, I was really wrestling. I got to be honest with you. I get back home. I usually go to our nursing home about two, three times a month and share the good news of Jesus Christ. And so all of a sudden along came all this, uh, I never say it right. I'm going to say this illness that way or whatever we got that's bugging everybody in the USA and around the world. So I never, they called me up. I not, I, they said, we can't, you can't come. Okay. I was headed to Partial to preach over there at a couple of churches they had there, pastor, I don't know what, but anyway, I had not been over there a couple of times, all of a sudden the phone rings, stay home. So I stayed home. Well, I, I still read my Bible and stuff, but you know, when you get in the habit of preparing sermons and all of a sudden you don't prepare one for a long time, you, you really do become just a reader. Now, I know that's crazy to y'all, but I just become a reader. I just read my Bible. Sure, I learn from it every day, but I was always reading my Bible. It's always, every time I'd read that, I'd, I'd say, man, that'd make a good sermon, Rick. And I would start taking notes. You know, I don't speak with a lot of notes, uh, but uh, I probably should. But as I get older, I probably should use more notes. Uh, but I don't use a lot of notes. So anyway, but I was wondering what to share with you. And I thought, you know, I've been coming here. I don't know how long I've been coming here. Maybe somebody knows more than me. I don't know how many years I came back and forth here, you know, and I remember the first time you came, I was scared to death. I'm still scared to death. So that hasn't changed any. So, uh, but anyway, I thought, you know, if there's anything in this whole world that people need to hear from you and I, it's what Jesus Christ has done for you. And I thought about that. And I thought that's true. You know, there's a lot of nice guys. There's a lot of nice ladies. There's a lot of nice people. Anyway, I know a lot of nice people. But not all of the nice people I know know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And that always kind of weighs on my heart. Be when people when I, that I know that and they... they they just really aren't really interested in it. But the one thing they can't deny is what God has done in my life. They can't deny that. Because most of my friends that, you know, it's not all of them, but most of them knew me when I was a young kid and uh, a young man. And I wasn't somebody that you wanted your daughter to bring home and say, Mom, this is Rick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Most dads didn't want their daughters to come home and say, Dad, would you like to meet Rick? No, that wasn't the case. But anyway, <clears throat> years ago, back I think it was 73, my wife and I, together, on a couch in a pastor's house, committed our lives to Jesus Christ. And it was kind of a funny thing, because I grew up doing pretty much what I wanted. Uh, I wasn't very, I always kid, but it's the truth that I was a first year literate child to graduate from Watford City High, and that's true. It's very true. I couldn't read nothing, and I could go into that story, but I'm not going to share that with you because it's not important. But the point is, is I went to an oil field. I had a friend of mine by, I see we got a deal in the mail the other, or my wife's email, he's been married 50 years now, and I, we graduated together. <laughs> And one day I'm walking down the street as about an 18 or 19 year old young man and I met Jim. I said, Jim, I haven't seen you all summer. Where have you been? You know, and he told me, and he said, I'm working in, uh, on workover rigs. I said, you're what? He said, I'm working on workover rigs. Well, what in the world is that? Now I grew up and, and oil has been around, but you know, not like it was. Anyway, and so he told me and he pulled out this check and showed it to me. I just about passed out. I'd never seen a check that big in my life. 
I didn't think they wrote checks that big. So I said to myself, self, you got to go to the oil field. This is what you got to do. Well, I got a job with a guy, went and got some other jobs. But finally, a guy that, I, that was different than anybody I'd ever met in my life asked me if I'd like to go to work for him. Only he was on a drilling rig. Now, workover rigs are small iron, drilling rigs are big iron. And we drill the wells and the workover rigs come in and finish them off and fix them and they got trouble and so on and so, on and so forth. And anyway, I said yes. But he was different. He was really different. He wasn't like all the other guys I worked around. He didn't swear. That was really unusual. I'd never heard a curse, curse word come out of his mouth. And I'd walk around that rig and I'd do my job. And he, and I was, and he was so nice. But yet he was as strong as anybody you'd ever seen in your life. He was a, he hung, a humongous man as far as strength goes. And, it, and anyway... And finally, one day, he's telling me about this guy called Jesus. And I'm thinking, really? How are we going to get into church out here in this rig? Well, so he invites me and my wife to a film, a Billy Graham film. Now, this is back in the 70s, so most of you don't even know that year of life. But anyway, that's when it was. And I went to this film, Time to Run, with my wife and I, and him and his wife, and I sat there. And my snooze can just, I thought it was dying. I said, I'm dead, I'm dead. This means I'm having a heart attack. My snooze can is leaping so bad, I must be having a heart attack. Well, I didn't. I got up. I said, and I never prayed in my life as far as I knew. And I thought, Lord, I can't let people see me like this. I'm crying like a baby. And, you know, not out loud, but tears running down my face. I already got to get rid of this. I, I got it. The lights are going to come on pretty soon. And here I am acting like this. And I got straightened out. And uh, I went home with him and his wife. And he said to me, he said, Rick, you, you and your wife ought to come with me to this church. There's this guy there you got to listen to. Oh, really? What church would that be? I'm a little skeptical now. What church would that be? And I'd never been in what, what would be, when I was a young man, we called Holy Roller Churches. Maybe that's what this would be called. I don't know that Holy Roller Churches. I thought maybe they actually did roll around in there. I didn't know. I mean, but I, it was a little bit spooky to walk into a place like that for me. Now, maybe it wasn't for my wife, but it was spooky for me. So I said, okay. <clears throat> I said, I'll go with you. So that Sunday, we went out and I parked out in front of the church or across kind of off. And we just sat there. Car came by, friends, some old rodeo friends of mine came by. I said, what are you doing? Oh, I said, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for this guy. Oh, yeah. Well, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm going to go to church with him in there. In there? I said, yeah, I'm going to go to church with him this morning. It was kind of funny when you, when you look back on it. It wasn't so funny at the time, but it was kind of funny now. Anyway, <clears throat> I wasn't going to go in there if he didn't show. Because I thought that the two of us were pretty husky at that time. We could whip our way out of there if we had to. And I knew I, by myself I'd probably have a tough time. So I, w I wouldn't have went in there if he wouldn't have showed. So he showed, and we went in there, and that guy preached. Oh, mama, did he preach? Praise God. And my snooze box started it again. Well, now I made it once. You can't possibly live through that twice. But we did. But in the back of his, and you probably heard this before, I don't know, but in the back of his, uh, I'm trying to find something in my Bible. I got so much junk in here, but I, well, oh, big deal. It was a little card. <clears throat> and then on this little card it had, if you were interested in the church, if you were interested in that, if you were interested. In, and, I, and so I checked, I was interested in his church. So that day, <clears throat> we went home. I wore out the carpet between the living room and the kitchen. <clears throat> Excuse me, I never stopped walking. I don't know why, I just never stopped walking. It just, God was getting a hold of my life. I didn't know what it was. You know, I thought I was Whatever. And so I finally said to my wife, I said, you know, dear, how about if I get, we go to church tonight? She said, well, we can't go to church. I said, well, why not? Well, she said, 
<coughs> we only had two children in and Hope <coughs> has a fever of about 103. We can't be running off to church. Well, that's probably true. But I said, how about if I get a <coughs> babysitter, will you go then? Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so I called my sister. I said, sis, how would you like to watch Hope while we go to church? So I think she watched both of them, didn't she? <coughs> or was it just Hope? And so off we went. <coughs> Got done with church, and my snooze box said the same thing. But you see, what I was thinking, every time I think about that, I think, you know, God was calling me, and I was resisting his call. And my snooze box was starting to bump a little less every time. My heart, I think, was getting hard. I was starting to resist the voice of God. Now, maybe you are not carrying a snooze box. I'm not saying that. But, but it just happened to be me at that time. And so, uh, consequently, to make a long story short, he said at the door of the church when we shook his hand to go out, he said, I, he said uh, why don't you and your wife stop by for a cup of coffee? He knew the perfect thing. Come and have some coffee. I like coffee. Yeah, I'm coming by. So I <clears throat> said, we're going to go. My poor wife, she, we went and got the Hopi and headed to the church. Got about, a, you know how your corners are. We was right here and his house was over here. And my wife said, I ain't going to quit drinking. I ain't going to quit smoking. I ain't going to quit all these things. Well, that was kind of interesting. She never did any of them. <laughs> but she was not going to quit. So I looked at her kind of like, huh? What happened? Who are you? I said, well, dear, who said we had to quit anything? I said, we're going for coffee for crying out loud. You know, so anyway, we get to the door of the man, and then the man is <coughs> in his wife or sweethearts, and uh, he has since gone home to be at the Lord. But uh, he uh, said, I hear, Rick, he said that uh, you're interested in our church. And, of course, I'm kind of shy. You guys have already figured that out. And I looked him in the eye and he said, I could give a hang less about your church. All I want to know is about God. That's why I checked that. I wanted, and I, in my heart, I wanted somebody like him to set me down and tell me about God. I'd heard about it. I'd been to church in my life, but I'd never heard it like I'm hearing it. It didn't, this was really new to me. And so he took us in, he set us down. Hope he still had her 103 temperature and Vicky was doing her best to keep her in shape. And my young, oldest son who was with us at that time was sitting down there playing the drum and he was doing his best to call something in. I don't know what, but he was doing his best. And the pastor was just as gentle as could be, shared Jesus Christ with me. Told me, that I needed to receive Christ. I had to repent of my sins that I was a sinner. Huh? Well, I knew I wasn't too good, but I didn't understand all that stuff. But he went on and explained to us that all have sinned, and we all have to come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that when we come to the knowledge of our sin, we have to ask him to forgive us. Because as it shares in John three sixteen, for God so loved that he gave. Gave what? Gave his only son for my sin. And I knew that's what I needed. Boy, I knew that's what I needed. I can't, I did still marvels. I still marvel at it when I think about it. And this was back in 73. And so that's a couple years ago. And I still marvel at it every time I think of how God worked. God worked in my life. It was just amazing that he could take and, and change somebody like me. And I remember standing on that couch. And I looked down at the couch, and my wife was off to my left. And for the first time, guys, I loved her. I'd been married for, I don't know, three years or so. And for the first time, I loved her. I really loved my wife. I thought, wow, how'd I miss that? You know, but anyway, and so the point I'm getting at is God changes lives. And today in our society today, there's a lot of craziness happening. Everybody's after their own thing. They think if I can only, this will bring me satisfaction. If I can only get this country straightened out, it'll be great if I can only. But you know what? They're going to find out their onlys don't work. The only thing that can make a difference in my life or your life or our nation's life is Jesus Christ. And he needs 
you and God needs me to be faithful witnesses of his grace. His grace is not just for the bad. My wife, I always tease her, she was such a perfect attendance person that when she went to church, she looked like Charles de Gaulle with all her pins, and yet she didn't know Christ. Now, you guys don't know who Charles de Gaulle is, do you, most of you? He used to be the head of France. <laughs> I know, I should modern up my language. Anyway, anyway, but that was kind of the way it was. See, so though I needed him, I didn't have no medals. She needed him, and she had a ton of them. And God changed our lives. And, I, you know, I, I suppose that you've heard this before, but i got to tell you some of these stories. I went, I went home and got ready because I had to go down to Dickinson, I think. We were roughnecking down around Dickinson someplace. And I had to go home, and I had to meet the crew in town to leave. And so I had to go home, get my lunch pail, and, and I got back into town, parked my car at the old depot. That was a good place to park our cars. That's where we all parked our cars. I parked my car at the depots, and <clears throat> off I went. And I crawled in the car. And I'm sitting there in the car. And uh, I just was quiet that day. I get to work. We go in the doghouse, and we got a doghouse. We call them doghouses. Top doghouse, bottom doghouse, a rough neck change, clothes in the bottom doghouse. The driller and the tool pusher, they kind of hang out in the top doghouse. That's, you know, it's not understandable. <clears throat> and so anyway, I'm in the bottom doghouse, and I'm in there, and I'm changing clothes. And I was kind of uh, a little bit on ornery side at times. I had my spot, and don't interfere with my spot. Kind of the way it was. Anyway, I'm sitting there in the doghouse changing clothes, putting my cubbies and everything on as normal. And all of a sudden, somebody said, Rick, yeah, what happened to you? Oh, what happened to me? Alfred must have told him that I got saved. That was my driller. He was a man who got me, introduced me to Christ, so to speak. And I thought, well, he must have told him. So... I just looked at him, I said, well, I found Jesus, I said. I got saved, I found Jesus Christ. Emptied the doghouse, I was the only one left. The doghouse, everybody just got out of there. Man, this guy's nuts. He's talking about Jesus Christ in the middle of a a doghouse. But anyway, that's the way it was. And that began the start of my evangelistic career. I preached Christ whenever I could preach Christ. I tell you what, those roughnecks, those company hands that come in, they'd stick their head in the door and they said, is he here? <laughs> now, it wasn't that I was mean to them. Now, please understand, I wasn't mean to them. But I would, if they would swear, I would not exhort them, not only, but I would speak to them in a kind way that maybe that they could probably wouldn't have, they could said the same words without swearing. I got to tell you another cute story, and then I'll shut up here. You guys are getting tired of hearing this country boy talk. But anyway, I, I was a fisherman. Now, when you all hear fisherman, what do you think? Rod and reel, right? No, in oil field, they call us fishermen. When we go out and your well breaks, we'll say you have an oil well and it's broke down. You, so you call me up and you say, my oil well broke down. We got the packer stuck in a hole and we kind of need it. Okay, I can come out and I know how to fix that. I'd been in the oil field most of my life. I worked in the North Slope of Alaska. I worked in the ocean. I'd been around. So consequently, to make a long story short, I was a fisherman. So anyway, <laughs> this crew I worked was just about the about nicest guys you could want to meet. I mean, you'd all just love on them if they were here today. But, oh, they were crude. And they, every other word, <laughs> they never called anything. They never called a ranch a ranch. I can't use the language they called a wrench, but they never you called a wrench a wrench, but everybody knew what they meant. You know, <clears throat> so one day we were working up there and it was really bad. And <clears throat> it wasn't that it, I couldn't handle it, but I thought, man, I ought to do something. So I said, okay, we're going to have a time out here. I said, stop them blocks right about here. I want the elevators about this high, okay? The, the elevators there, which you latch on the pipe, you know. And so anyway, they stopped the elevators, and we went around. Now, I said, when I point at something, I want you guys to tell me what it is. Okay? They said, yeah, that's fair. So I point at the elevators. 
And after about five minutes, they got elevators out because they were cussing and swearing steady. And they could finally got elevators out. I said, ooh, no. Now, I said, none of that made any sense. It's called what? Elevators. They looked at me like, hmm, that guy might be a little bit touched, but not too bad. He wanted to get bumped on the way over here or what? So then I'd grab a wrench and I'd say, what's this? And they'd tell me, but it took them a while to get out, wrench, pipe wrench. I said, no, 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 no. I said, you're right, but it's just a pipe wrench. They finally got it. So I'd walk around the rig floor and I'd point. Slips, they'd look at me like I was nuts. But they knew if they didn't say it, I'd keep doing it until they did. So they'd say, slips. And then they'd say, pipe wrench. They'd say, elevators. They'd say, blocks. They'd say, winch line. They'd say all these different words. And I'd say, <clears throat> guys, you finally got it. And I'd go, I went back and sat in my pickup. But I mean, it was, it, it was, you can, this servant Jesus can be a good thing. It doesn't mean you have to run around in a monk's robe, robe or anything else. Jesus Christ said that he came and he gave his life. Did he give his life more abundantly? The joy of the Lord, the Bible said, is our what? Our strength. You can laugh. You can enjoy life. You don't have to look like you've been sucking lemons. You don't have to be like that. Of course, you've got to be considerate and kind and loving when people need help. You've got to be that. You can't, it isn't, but you can still have the joy of the Lord. One time out of rig, I left, was leaving a rig, and I'd been sharing with these people, and, and I got the tools all loaded up on my trailer and was headed out, and the driller from the platform, I could see him waving at me, hollering, Rick, Rick! I thought, What's, well, I wonder what he wants. So I shut her down, stopped. And he came up to my door. And he said, Rick, when you talk about Jesus Christ, you talk like you know him. And I said, well, I do. Well, he said, I thought it was just a swear word. Isn't that something? American. And he thought Jesus Christ was just a swear word. And pretty soon his whole crew is up there. And we're having a little revival meeting on the location. It wasn't enough that I was good. They needed Jesus. Because he's who changed me. He can change them also. Now, to my knowledge, I've never seen one of those guys since. I don't know what has transpired in their lives. I hope good things. I never will forget that, though. Rick, I thought Jesus was a swear word. And I got to explain to them that this swear word is God so loved that he gave his only begotten son which was Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have life everlasting. That's who this Jesus is. All of the fears, all of the, all that goes on, Jesus is still the answer. It isn't that we don't have trouble sometimes, but Jesus can get us through Jesus can get us through. Shirley and I just about went broke two or three times on the place we're on. I don't know how we made it. I sat there sometimes and think back, how in the world did we make it? But it wasn't that we did so much. is that God did it. God did it through the person of Jesus Christ. So today... I know you know that Christ is more than a swear word. But today, if there's some reason that anybody here has not opened their life up to Jesus Christ, I would recommend it highly that you do. Just ask him to come in and forgive your sin. And man, you'll see a life change. I don't care how good you are, you'll still see a change. Because he changes lives. He still does it. Like I told the one guy... If going to church was enough, 
than walking in my garage and make you a car. And it doesn't. Going to church is great. But let's go with Christ in our hearts so that we in turn can lift up the name of Jesus. Oh man, I'd like to come back here someday when this church was so full that I'd have to sit on my hands and knees behind this little deal before I got called up to share the gospel. That would be, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Let's pray. Father, I thank you this morning that we can share the love of Jesus Christ. I'm thankful, God, for the word of God. I'm thankful, God, that you're, you uh, give us the word to point us closer to you. But I'm so thankful that you came and you died for each and every one of us, Lord, and that you love each and every one of us. There is not a one person here that is loved more than the next. You love us all, and we thank you for that. So, Lord, bless now, I pray. Bless the continuous of this service, I pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Where did my sneezing buddy go? <laughs> Well, I think, uh, Rick, I think uh, John Denver said it best. Thank God you're a country boy. <laughs> we will uh, be serving communion this morning. And as, as we have in the last several months, we will be asking uh, those who wish to take communion this morning, if you would come through the uh, forward on the center aisle here and um, you can divide into two si into two lines here and, and either go to the left or the right and, and you will be given the bread uh, and we will we will take it from the tray and put it in your hand and uh, the, the wine will be taken from the tray and, and placed in your hand as well and you can put the cups in the in the trash cans as you see them there um, we're trying to keep everybody safe as best we can, so um, once again, we'll, we'll, we'll do our best. Um, so before I ask our uh, ushers to come forward this morning, Let us just read um, from, from the gospel, uh, Luke chapter 22, starting at verse 14. When the hour came, Jesus and his apostles reclined at the table, and he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this, passion, this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, This, take this, and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and, and the opportunity to worship you and especially to come to your table this day. Father, in today's world with all the confusion and, and the suffering, Father, we can't help but wonder sometimes if, if you hear our prayers and and uh, forgive us for that, Father, because if there's anything in this world that proves that you love us, it is Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. And, and we celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper this day, and, and we know that Jesus shed his blood for our, for our sake, that we would have a relationship with you, that we could come to know you, and that we could spend eternity with you, Father. Let us never, ever take that for granted, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. So, if I could have...
Those of you who would like to take communion, please come forward. Well, if I'm not mistaken, I think we got everything covered, I think. <laughs> um, if you would all please rise, we will sing our closing hymn, number 314, What a Day That Will Be.
Jesus I shall see. I will look upon his face, the one who laid me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand and leads me to the promised land, what a day. Let us bow our heads and ask for God's blessings. Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for this day. And Father, um, each morning the sun comes up and, and each one of us here looks at the world in a, in a different way. Um, some with joy and rejoicing and some with sadness and, and pain. And, and we pray that, that you would fill each and every one of us today, this week, and throughout our lives that we would always be faithful that you are our strength and our refuge we pray that you would lift us up this day and this week and and give us the strength to do your work to bring to bring honor and glory to your name in jesus precious name amen don't forget coffee downstairs so.